In the next step, we will import the DXF objects to TNM, and we will convert the DXF objects into TNM objects. Now we've shifted over to the TNM interface, and we have a new project here with no data in it. So let's go ahead and import the DXF data. So we, do, we went to File, Import DXF, File, click on Existing Roads, .dxf. We get a prompt to choose our uh, system of measurements. So here's our DXF line work. This is the completed uh, project uh, roadway line work. So let's convert one of these lines to a TNM roadway. We'll zoom in on this ramp we were working on. So to aid us in this process, let's uh, change some things in the view. We'll show hide some items. We'll click on point numbers for DXF objects and for roadways. So all these zeros here are the points on the lines that we coded in MicroStation uh, to show where these roadway locations are. So let's convert this line into a TNM roadway. So I double clicked it. And then I go to convert DXF segments to roadway. Now the view doesn't update immediately, but if you pan the view slightly, you'll see these point numbers show up for this roadway. And you can also see these arrowheads indicating the direction of traffic flow. So this is now a DXF roadway superimposed on top of a DXF object. So now if I were to hide the DXF objects only under this column, click OK, you can see the point numbers for the DXF objects are still shown, and the roadway line is now shown here along with the roadway line numbering. Okay, we've fast forwarded to the point where we've completed all of our TNM roadway line work and we've converted all the DXF objects. So uh, pretty much all the TNM objects can be converted in this way, the roadways, the barriers, the building rows, the terrain lines, ground zones, tree zones. The one exception is the receivers, because receivers are not lines or areas, they are points. So in order to create receivers in, in TNM using the DXF background, we use uh, somewhat of a different method. So what we'll do is we'll import our DXF file uh, for our receivers from our project here. So here's our receivers.dxf file. So when we were coding these earlier in MicroStation, we coded two receivers connected by a single line. So to capture those coordinates, we're going to turn on our point numbers for the DXF objects and zoom into the area we were working on here. You can see these are the zeros marking the points of the DXF line. So to place receivers uh, at each of these DXF points, we'll click on the receiver tool, which is this yellow ear, and we're gonna click on the TNM snap tool. 
and the snap tool function functions much like the microstation snap tool. I get near this point here and then I click and it captures this coordinate uh, precisely and it'll capture it uh, x, y, and if you have a z uh, coordinate that you were able to develop in the file from a digital ground model or a surface, then it will capture that as well. So you'll have x, y, and z. And that, that's a really good thing to have if you have a 3D topo file. So you can just go along in this way, snapping to each of these points. So you can capture precisely where you intended to place your receivers. So that's an example of how the TNM snap tool is used. Let's look at the case where we have to input elevation coordinates manually in TNM. Okay, now all of our line work is finished. We've converted all our DXF objects for all of our different object types. All our receivers are coded in. So now what about that case where you have two-dimensional objects, we have topographic uh, information that we coded in MicroStation, but it doesn't have uh, elevation coordinates associated with the lines, and we have to manually type it in. So we started to do that with our Excel file here. We coded terrain lines, and we had another tab for, the, for our roadways. We coded in this roadway here, and it was this ramp. So let's zoom in to that ramp here. This is the first point of the ramp. So let's input roadways. So as you can see, we have X and Y coordinates, but Z equals zero because we haven't put elevation coordinates in yet. If we had the digital ground model, all that, all those would have the elevation numbers assigned for each one of those points, but we need to put them in manually. So first we need to find out how TNM coded the object. So we'll click on the first point here and see where it ends up. This is point number one. So this is where we want to start our TNM uh, elevation assignments. So this roadway is 35 points long, and that corresponds to the 35 points that we coded in MicroStation. So we're going to copy these numbers over. Copy and paste. And as we know, these numbers turn red. That means we still have to apply the data for it to be part of the TNM database. So now we have the elevation data. But you have to do this manually for each one of these objects. And that is, there is more work in that process, as we've talked about. So to do that for all of these objects, it, it takes more hours of work. So it's definitely preferable to have a three-dimensional file, a digital ground model, so that this is all taken care of already.